Hello again, it is me, Matsimus, and thank you so much for joining me today. We are discussing Cold War tactics once again, and today something a little bit more unique in terms of tactics that were utilised or going to be utilised by forces in the Cold War period. Now, one of the most important aspects of the Cold War was reaction to potential attack. Of course, the Cold War being exactly that, uh, was very much a stalemate. No one really wanted to start anything, but if it did kick off, they wanted to be able to react as quickly as possible. Aircraft being one of the dominating factors for the Cold War in terms of quick reaction, it was very difficult to try and get aircraft off the ground very, very quickly, especially in remote areas where airfields were pretty difficult to get to. There's a lot of different ideas thrown out there and today we're going to discuss one of the most unique ideas that I think I've ever seen. To me, it makes complete sense. To some of you, it's probably absolutely baffling. I myself was actually quite shocked that I had not heard of this kind of tactic before. It makes complete sense. One of the biggest tactical disadvantage of fighter jets or high powered warplanes is the vulnerability in the fact that they have to require runways to take off. Modern airfields are no match for modern weapons, bunker busting munitions can crater the thickest of concretes and it does not take much to actually create these runways to be inoperable and therefore making the use of fighter jets in that aerospace absolutely redundant. There was a brief period after World War II when the US military thought it had a solution. Simple, design planes that didn't require runways. And of course, during that particular time period, its technological advances were not really quite ready to do this and it really didn't work very well. Over the ages, rocket technology, especially from the Nazis pushing projectiles and aircraft developed, and eventually the United States followed suit later on during the Cold War into this. This is known as the Zero Length Launch Platform. It's basically a gigantic rocket booster based on the bottom of the aircraft to launch it at very high speeds to prevent it from even needing a runway. Of course, a lot of different parameters are needed to make sure that this works, a ton of thrust, and in my own personal opinion, you're going to need balls of steel to be inside of this thing. Similar to that of an aircraft carrier, you are literally being launched at extremely high speed to try and give you enough momentum to allow the jet engine to take over and continue on your merry little journey. Of course, the technology is basically a gigantic rocket to launch you fast, but there's a little bit more to it than that. When designing this particular technology, they really had to take into consideration the perfect weight structure to send it flying. They did a lot of testing with iron blocks for the most part to prevent wasting airframes, and it took a very long time to perfect not only the angle to send the aircraft, the type of booster that it can use, the weight requirement of the actual booster, the fuel usage, a ton of research went into this. It's not as simple as just whacking a rocket on there and sending it on its way. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was a pilot during the Cold War period who got asked to test this thing, it would be the most terrifying and the most awesome thing in the world to be launched out of a bunker like a Thunderbird. It would be amazing. But you're also technically looking at a rocket being propelled from the underside of your aircraft, and hopefully it's going to propel you in the right direction. Y'all nervous? Yeah. No. Yes, no. Okay, I'm confident in you. About my recording. I'm not saying that thing won't fly. If it had landing gear and he could taxi way out there. And run it and see what it yeah. does. Yeah. Uh, that's not bad. But in all seriousness, using the state-of-the-art missile technology of the time, manned fighter jet aircraft could indeed be fired from all over the place, whether it be in woodlines, off the back of a truck, off hillsides, and really close proximity environments, this was a game changer for the Cold War. It allowed commanders to instantaneously launch aircraft without the need to have to prep the aircraft on the runway, taxi, and basically allow it to burn enough fuel or enough thrust to get off the ground. This time, the aircraft could basically be thrusted into the sky and instantaneously become part of the battle space. Of course, the jets that were actually being launched had a very low stall speed, which allowed the rockets to not even have to be that powerful. The aircraft of the time, such as the Starfighter, was not an extremely heavy fighter aircraft. And yes, there were phases where things didn't go quite right. We've seen multiple instances of larger bombers trying to have the same thing applied to them, even with the Hercules aircraft with these short takeoff systems. The rockets can cause a lot of troubles. When you're working with rockets, they can be quite 
unpredictable. One of the key attributes that caused a lot of problems for this system was the fact that once it had burnt as much of the fuel off and thrust out of it, it actually turned into a counterweight which allowed for some serious turbulence and potential stalling of the aircraft. Nothing screams aerodynamic perfection than a gigantic empty booster underneath your aircraft. Of course, takeoffs were the easy part though. Test pilots described the uncanny experience of smoothly surging into the air from atop of the rail and then simply taking over the controls of the aircraft as normal as if you would take off from a main runway. During one test, an F-104 pilot performed a barrel roll after separating from his booster. That man has balls. But landing without the runway was the lot more challenging principle of this thing. Yes, of course you can get in in the air and fight the battle space, knock out a couple of jets and fly back home, but the creativity ran up against physics. Goodyear made a giant airbag. No, seriously, to catch the falling jet plane safely, they designed an airbag. There was also different methods of catching the aircraft. Nets, cables, extremely short runways with gigantic pillows at the end. I'm not kidding, they tried just about everything and it just didn't work. Later, the Air Force completely gave up on saving the plane and the pilots were told to simply bail out over friendly territory. Now, you may think this is completely cost ineffective, not worthwhile, why would they do that? Think about it folks, this is the Cold War. Cost ineffectiveness? No one cares. It is mass numbers of firepower into the sky as quickly as possible. It really did make a lot of sense. Why have to land the aircraft again? Load the jet up with as much munitions as necessary to either engage air or ground targets, go into the battle space just once, create an airframe that's cheap enough and reliable enough to be able to complete the mission, fly it back home into, I guess, friendly airspace or back into friendly lines, bail out of the aircraft, let it crash into a safe environment, and there you go, you've pretty much knocked out a ratio of, say, you know, 10 jets to one. That's a comparable loss. Uh, when it's no lives being lost and pilots can then again go back into a new jet and off they go again. It's not really that crazy when you think about the time and the age of which Cold War era fighting was kind of based upon. Russian doctrine was flood as much aircraft, armor, infantry, tanks, whatever it may be, into the battle space. The same thing would apply back then. The Russians did the exact same thing though with the MiGs. They designed the same kind of principle to try and get as many aircraft as they can into the sky. I would be absolutely terrified in seeing just four or five of those MiGs flying up from a runway, let alone hundreds of them launching from a wood line on these rocket pods. It would be savage. You'd be thinking, hmm, all of a sudden there's just missile artillery. Oh no, that's just 200 MiGs about to engage us from the wood line. Yes, the wood line, not a runway, the wood line. It would be absolutely terrifying, but also incredible to see. Good thing that really the technology didn't take off, so to speak, pun the pun, because it really overall wasn't needed. The Cold War, of course, burnt out. We never actually saw any potential combat, and most of the combat that was placed upon the Doctrine back then was reliant upon aircraft that needed big runways. They couldn't launch the big, fat, heavier later Cold War aircraft. They were too big, too hefty, way too much weight to try and launch off there, and they just didn't see the cost effectiveness overall for the long run, especially for NATO nations. But the core principle, I think, is very unique and extremely cool. Of course, some of the detrimental factors to this design not being used was that the Russians had airfields everywhere. They had runways everywhere. They didn't need short takeoff areas because if they had to pull in their air force, they would be in the sky so fast and in such large numbers that it would make no difference having jets launching from short runways, wood lines, trucks, wherever it may be, because they would normally be the ones initiating the initial conflict. Now, when it comes to larger aircraft being launched, it wasn't capable. The Cold War jets were getting bigger, thicker, spelled T-H-I-C-C, and uh, they were just not really feasible to launch in these new pods. The heavier they got, the more difficult it was, and NATO said, you know what, how about let's look at some other technology, maybe the Harrier jump jet, so to speak? That's where things started to change for the, you know, more vertical takeoff and landing side of things than it was to launch these things off gigantic rockets. However, I still think the core principle of this design is amazing. It's almost a meme. I mean, it is. It's, it's a meme. Like, launching jets from, like, 200 feet is amazing. It looks amazing. It looks like a meme as they launch. It's hilarious in some regards to watch. I can just see the pilot going, Wee! 
as he's launching. Um, it's just amazing. Really, really cool idea. And it's a little bit of a shame that it never really kind of uh, came to fruition. But hey, let's just be glad that the Cold War never kicked off in the first place. The Air Force eventually abandoned the zero length launch but the Navy considered giving it another go. In 1958, Boeing proposed a submarine aircraft carrier to the Navy that relied on ZLL to hurl its aircraft into the sky. The planes would have been launched from the sub's deck while the vessel was surfaced and then would have landed somewhere else. No one really knows where, <laughs> but a cool idea, I guess, nonetheless. For me, I just love the fact that these things were actually able to get an aircraft so quickly into the air and put it into a fighting capability. The test pilots back then were probably not only on the joy rides of their lives, but pooping their pants along the way. I'd be pretty darn nervous being strapped into these things and saying, okay, everything looks good, we should be fine here, you've just got a gigantic rocket on the underside of you and a jet engine right beside it. Should be fine, everything's gonna be fine, just press that switch and off you go. And three, two, one, and boom. That's all I would be thinking as a test pilot. And I'm sure many of the test pilots thought none of it. They were probably just so happy to be involved in a new project that could be the future of combat aircraft but yeah never really came to a uh, full event and you know maybe in the future they'll look into something very similar i don't know maybe we'll even see something like this struts disengaged commencing launch t-5 You know, it is complete sci-fi, but you never know, it could happen, it'd be interesting. And in terms of modern technology, we really haven't completely gotten rid of this idea. We still use it for aerial drones and targetry, yes, we launch these red buggers off into the sky so that other more cool fighter jets can blow them up. So it's not that the technology was completely abandoned, it's still used for certain resources, just not the ones where they're actually killing anything, they're more getting killed. Folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, I'd love to hear your comments on not only this technology, but the video itself. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, please hit that bell button via the subscribe button. If you do wish to support my channel, go check out my Patreon account. It is in the link description box below. And uh, again, I hope you all have a wonderful day and thanks again for watching. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye.